Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, my dear friends and fellow travelers. Welcome again to Albion Bible Church online here on YouTube. It's so good to uh, be in your presence once again. I pray that uh, the blessings of the Lord are upon you, that you feel his hand of comfort and peace upon you, and that you experience that comfort and peace no matter what's going on in your life. And uh, that's, that's something that we pray for each and every one of you always. Um, uh, so, uh, as we always do, we offer our prayer list. If you need to uh, contact us, email us, please. Uh, that's the, that seems to be the best way to get a hold of us. So just send us an email. And uh, th that, that email should be in the description. So, um, so just send that to us and uh, we will definitely add you to our list. And uh, we, will, we will be praying for you. Okay, and it doesn't matter what it is, uh, whether it's something that's that that's that's a, a great blessing that the Lord has blessed you with, or or uh, or something that's that's uh, that's uh, you know affecting your life in some way. Uh, we know we can come to the Lord uh, uh, to our Lord with that, and um, and He will, you know, we we can appeal to Him as Apostle Paul sa says to pray without ceasing. So. So uh, please take advantage of that and um, send it into our email if you need it. Okay. All right. Saying that, um, we are uh, continuing on. Uh, we're going to continue on with. Um, uh, we had started a while back uh, looking at the book of Mark, the, the Gospel of Mark. Excuse me. And um, we're going to take a look at this. Um, yeah, as we know, Advent is uh, not Advent. <laughs> Lent. I'm always I'm always mixing up Advent and Lent. Forgive me, uh, but uh, but Lent will be starting very soon on the the 25th of this month, as as, uh, as a matter of fact, and uh, so uh, as, as Lent approaches and we we uh, enter that time, and I, I always love this time of uh, in the time of the church calendar, uh, the time leading up to Easter. There's there's just uh, there's there's just such a richness of this time of of uh, of uh, self-examination and uh, and 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 studying what our Lord and Savior did for us and what He went through for our benefit for our for the forgiveness of our sins. So, but uh, what we're going to take a look at today is we're going to look at uh, this is rather early in the ministry of Jesus as uh, as recorded in the Gospel of Mark, and we're going to look at Mark chapter one, verses twenty-nine through thirty-four. And um, we're going to take a look at that, starting with um, starting with verse twenty nine. Yes, uh, Mark chapter one, twenty nine through thirty four. Okay. All right. And I, I invite you, as always, to follow along with me if you'd like. You know, you can pause the video, find it in your text Bible or your Bible on your your favorite Bible app on your phone or on your uh, laptop or however you however you engage Scripture, you know take time you know pause the video go ahead find it and then when you're ready press play and we can you can follow along and we can read together okay so the uh, Gospel of Mark chapter one starting at verse twenty nine and we're gonna go down to verse thirty four okay all right and Mark writes. Verse 29, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and the demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let them, the demons speak because they knew who he was. May Almighty God bless this, the reading of his holy word. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your word and for the way that you have provided for us in so many ways, O oh Lord. Lord, thank you for your provisions. Thank you for the provision of your word. Thank you for your grace, for your forgiveness, freely given to us, dear Lord. Uh, all we need to do, we need to just to 
come to it, to come humbly, humbly before your cross and ask your forgiveness and receive your grace in repentance and humility coming before you. So Lord, we thank you for this word, for this love letter that you've given to us so that we may know your heart even more. We may know even more what it means to, to follow you and to do what it is that you command how much you love us and you love the world and, and and so lord may this word change us down to 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 our the very depths of who we are to our very core dear lord so that we may be able to be effective witnesses sharing the good news of your gospel dear lord your death and your resurrection and one day you're coming again so lord we give you thanks in your name we pray father son holy spirit amen Okay. Now, this is beginning the work of the kingdom. Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom, that he was ushering in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. It, the, those two things are used interchangeably, and it, it's, it all means the same thing. It's, it's this new thing that God was, was starting and was doing in the world, and it was started with his beloved only begotten son jesus you know this was this was this was his his right that this was his duty this was his this was part of the will of god for him as the messiah as the son of god to usher in this this kingdom and we as his followers we are we're part of that we're part of that kingdom and it's part of our duty to do our part to spread the good news of that kingdom as well by word and deed so one of the things to know about the kingdom is and we probably need to to really kind of because you know, we talk about the kingdom of God a lot but um, but maybe we, we we talk about it so much and we take it for granted so much that we haven't stopped maybe lately to think about what it means you know what 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 entails the kingdom of God what does that mean when we say that well one of the things about the kingdom of God one of the things you can definitely say about it is that it is proactive it is not reactive okay or nor is it passive okay what i mean is by the proactive it means it means go and do right it's it's out there it's it's out there trying to reach out to people to, you know making the influence known spreading the good news doing good works in the name of jesus all of those things it's not reactive which means which means it's 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 behaving out of some kind of outward stimuli or response right you know it's like when if, if somebody would hit me my reaction might be to hit back no that's that's not the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is proactive it's out there doing things and spreading the good news of of of, of uh of our living saving lord jesus christ you know to the world that does not know him yet you know so you know and we're not waiting for the world to come to us Okay, we're not we're not waiting to react to the world. We and we, we and we shouldn't react to the world. We are proactive. We are we're out there acting in spite of the world, ahead of the world, you know, getting right into the thick of things. And we're not passive, which means we just just don't sit or we do we don't we're, we're, passive means just it's basically sit around and do nothing. Okay, we, we're kingdom of, kingdom of God is clearly not that. Okay, so go and do that's what the kingdom of god is all about it's about like-minded people who are standing shoulder to shoulder all looking outward at the possibilities of what could be you know what could be a world transformed by the kingdom of god and to go and do to be the light of christ to carry the light of christ within us to to share with the world okay and another thing about that as we go and do it's often better with friends it's better with those that that we love we trust and we have like interests and or or maybe the the, the one or maybe we have different interests but that the common denominator we all have is that jesus christ is lord right he is our living saving lord and we trust in him and 
And what better way to do ministry than to do it with friends, with do it with those who love Jesus just as much as we do, and be able to go and do. And we see this in this in our gospel story for today. You notice Jesus calls when he had call, when he called. He he didn't do he didn't start this ministry. He didn't start ushering in the kingdom alone. He called friends. He called people who, or or at least people who would become his close friends. He called them to himself to to come along with him to to serve with him. And it's, things really are better with friends. Think about it. You know, think about the fun times you may have had with friends or or with family that that you that you get along with real well. And and uh, and and think about how great. Think about your best moments with friends and family. Those those moments that you wish you just could just freeze in place and could live in that moment forever. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why we take photographs or videos or, or things like that, because those are memories of things we really want to remember. We want to be able to look back on them and say, yeah, that was, that was a great time. That was a wonderful time. Well, kingdom of God is, is like that, but in motion and it's, and it's all the time where we can live in this, 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 uh, doing ministry together. You know, and and we see that with uh, with uh, Simon, Andrew, James, and John, you know, um, doing ministry together. You know, there's it's it's just it's so much more. It's more fun. It's more fulfilling whenever we have others that we can do these these things together. The camaraderie, you know, the closeness, the the fellowship. You know, that's that's why the church itself is so important because the church is to foster that. You know, we're not we're not a bunch of lone rangers running around. We're we we work with one another, you know, towards the common goal of you know, making this world aware of the good news of Jesus Christ, his gospel, you know, and, and pointing them towards his cross so that they may come humbly before his cross and confess their sins and repent their sins and be forgiven and receive grace. And be washed clean by his blood. And so and then they in turn will lead others as well. Just as just as we were once led. Now we see the hand of God involved. The kingdom of God involves the hand of God. And what does the hand of God do? What does it mean by that? Well, look at our gospel story today. There is a particular example. There is Peter's mother-in-law. She was sick in bed, okay? And she could not do the things that she wanted to do. She was sick, right? And, uh, you know, think about, you know, your worst sickness that you've had, you know, how bad it is whenever you're, you're bedridden. You feel like you can't, you can't even be bothered. It makes a chore just to, just to get up or to even move for a little bit, let alone um, trying to entertain guests. So she was sick in bed, you know, and uh, and we all know what sickness is like, and uh, you know maybe some of us have suffered through some things recently, you know, and uh, so you know how how it feels to be knocked pretty low, you know, right on your back basically, you know, and and that's the thing, you know, sickness, disease, those things, they really get in the way of us doing the things that God wants us to do evil prevents us from fulfilling our godly purpose and and we see that with 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 peter's mother-in-law you know she wanted to be able to wait on and and she wanted to be able to serve jesus and his friends and and to to, you know to 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 demonstrate hospitality to them because hospitality was a big deal in that in that culture still is to this very day you know but 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 that's a that's a big deal and the fact that she could not do it was uh, you know, undoubtedly causing her great distress as well. So Jesus takes her by the hand and he raises her up. Very simply, you know, with, with no effort at all. And uh, we see the mighty active power of God in action. You know, 
because of, of the nature of who God is, that he created all things and there's nothing outside his ability to respond to. We see that without any effort at all, just took her by the hand and, and raised her up and she got up and she was feeling completely better. And she was able to then demonstrate hospitality and, uh, and feel better about herself because she was able to do that. But you notice again, not passive, not reactive, it's proactive. You know, he sought her out and he, and he didn't, he didn't wait for her to call out. He didn't wait for her to come to him. He, he went to her and raised her up, just took her by the hand and whatever fever she had, or whatever sickness she had left her. Now, as believers, there's a, there's a question I need to ask. Are your expectations too low? when it comes to the things of faith, when it comes to following Christ. Sometimes I think we believers just, our expectations are way too low. And there's a lot of reasons for that, you know. But a lot of people have low expectations of, of many things in life because, because perhaps, life is, perhaps life has dealt you a raw deal and not many things have gone your way in your life much. Perhaps you've had a lot of setbacks and suffering and pain and a lot of just things that just seem to be out of your control that, that come at you and you're, and you're just just not even sure why they happen or what. And sometimes that, that bleeds over into our, into, into our faith life. And so we don't expect much. But I'm here to tell you, we, we really should expect great things. If we fall, if we truly do follow and belong to our Lord, living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then we should expect great things. You know, it's it's indicative of who Jesus is and what to expect in the kingdom. What we what, not only what we see in this gospel, but also the stories of everyday life of of believers all around us. And our bully, our brothers and sisters who are in far off lands that maybe we won't even meet until we reach the other side of this whole thing and we see each other face to face. But we see this through the these act, just this small action here in in uh, in the Gospel of Mark. We, we see what kind of Lord Jesus is. We see that he's the one who's taking the hand. He's the one who's gently rising the sick one out of bed. And as, as they rise, the sickness and fever leave them. And they feel so much better and they're able to do, get, get back to doing what they love to do. And that's serving. You see, I think that's, a, that's an important aside there in there was it wasn't to restore her to to anything other than the wish to serve and jesus knew that jesus knew her she knew he knew that she in her heart she wanted to serve she wanted to serve him but she couldn't because she was sick so he gave her the opportunity to be able to serve and to be blessed in the serving just as she blessed him and his friends as she served them. So she serves dinner. No one compelled her. She wanted to do it. Okay. This was not something that, no, this, this was something that she wanted to do. And it's, it's, and you got to understand that about, especially about the cultures in that part of the world, you know, hospitality is everything. It's, and, and, and to be able to offer hospitality is, is is a is a great honor and it is consi it's considered a blessing upon the house that offers it one who cannot offer hospitality you know they, they feel that they're missing out on a possible they're missing out on a blessing okay they're missing out you know they want to be able to serve they want to be able to to show proper hospitality okay 
So that's why she gets up immediately and starts serving them. You know, not because anybody forced her to or was, you know, cracking the whip at her to do it. No, she wanted to because that's that was that's part of the ingrained nature of, of hospitality in that culture and to offer it is is just as much of a blessing as those who are being served are blessed. Okay. But we see this in Jesus, in his actions. It's the kingdom of God, once again, that proactive kingdom of God setting things right. That which evil breaks or stymies or puts a roadblock, Jesus removes that. So that the things that are right are done. And they are done right. Jesus raises us takes us by the hand and raises us up out of the grip of sin to take part in the serving of the kingdom. So we are to do the same to others by our service, our actions, and our words. So, you know, just as Jesus raises us up, you know, elevates us, you know, from, from, uh, from our, our lowly, sinful state into a state of grace, of, of one who's saved, one who's forgiven, one whose sins have been washed clean by the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He raises us up just, just as he rose Peter's mother-in-law. She was at a lowly state where she could do nothing for, not nothing either for herself or for those around her. And he raised her up so she could live out her purpose, do her duty. And do it with joy. And he does the same with us. He raises us up to our purpose, to our ultimate fulfillment, to to the to our completion of who we are, to what we were made for, what we are called for. And that's to serve him and serve others. And we see that the power of evil is often overturned and silenced. And in this case, it completely was. You know, when Jesus went about his work, you know, curing diseases, casting out demons. The power of evil overturned. The power of evil silenced. You know, and the, this is one of the attractions of the, of the kingdom when it's in action. Because it dispels the darkness. Because Jesus is the light. And light is... And it doesn't take a whole lot of light to dispel a lot of darkness. But Jesus is the light. And his light is, is brilliant. And it dispelled, just as it dispelled the darkness that day, it, and it can, he continues to do so through us, using us. You know, in the world and in this country, demonic forces are being turned aside despite the growing interest in demons and darkness in general. Because we have to admit, there seems to be a lot of interest, a lot of perverse interest in dark imagery, in the powers of darkness. People want, you know, it seems crazy, but there are people, a large number of, and growing number of people, uh, young people, old people, it doesn't seem to matter what age, but people that are so interested in the occult and interested in darkness and interested in demonic forces and and uh so the, you know you ever wonder why there's so many uh programs either on tv or online or, or dealing with with um, supernatural things and supernatural matters and dealing with um, you know, the occult and dealing with you know hauntings and demonic possessions and demonic uh, activity you know, people are attracted to those things for some reason. People want to experience these things. And I'm telling you from my own experience, they don't want to, they really, if they knew what was in store for them, they would never, never want to seek this stuff out. You see, yeah, see neo-paganism, paganism on the rise. People are really interested in these, these old religions these old belief systems that, that, that Christianity had, had proven itself superior to long ago. But now, 
it's there's a resurgence in interest in those old religions again um and like i said ghost hunting programs on on tv and on online and you know all of those things there's just just such a such an interest in in these this these these things of darkness but the power of christ to expel evil okay it is still very much at work if you pay attention it is still very much at work um you <laughs> You won't hear about it on the nightly news, and a lot of times you won't hear about it on these programs either. But the ability of the power of the of the the very name of Jesus to dispel evil in this world, and it, I mean all kinds of evil, not just not just you know overt supernatural manifestations, but all kinds all manners of evil. The uh, the power of Christ can overcome any kind of evil. But it, it just as he works through us, we are all, every one of us who are his followers, who believe in him, who trust in him. He works through each and every one of us in our own unique way that he has gifted us. And you, you won't hear about it much on the nightly news, but it happens all the time. The power of Christ. He is still able to turn this world on its head, you know. Unjust systems and social issues keep people in bondage. But as the kingdom as kingdom agents, which we are, we do our part to turn them on their heads to see that evil is, is expelled and exposed and that the truth of Christ and his in his kingdom the truth of his kingdom prevails. Evil ex is expelled by the power of Christ through us and in us to the world at large. So Christ chooses to work through each of us as his church. That's how he works. He works through us. He wants us to take part in it. You know, it's, it's once again, not passive, but proactive. Go and do. What did he say? One of the last things he said to his disciples before he went back to the Father's throne in heaven. He says, go out. Go out. Go, you, go. And go out among all the people. All the people groups. All the nations. You know, Teach them what I've taught you and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. But go and do. This is that that idea or that that idea that that Latin phrase the the missio dei, the missional God, the God who goes, the God who goes out before us. Okay, because that's that's in God's very nature. God is not passive; he's proactive, and he as members of his as as those who are part of his kingdom, we are to be the same. And that includes prayer life which is so vital to our faith. You know, we, we cannot have this power on our own. We can't, it's not something we can muster up or conjure up, but this is something that's granted to the Lord. And the more we spend time in prayer and study of his word, the closer we get to that, the more we're, we're granted strength and the ability to expel evil through word and through deed. You know, if, uh, you know, if, you know, we are in, we definitely are, whether we realize it or not, we are in the silencing demons business. Okay. That's what business we are in. Um, regardless of what you may see on, in, in, in popular media or on TV or in movies or video games or whatever it is that, that people are into these days, the forces of evil are not stronger than the power of Christ. The, the 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 power of Christ is not somehow unable to deal with evil. The demons must obey. They have no power over a faithful, spirit-filled believer. You truly follow Christ, and you truly, truly trust in Him. Then hell itself has no power against you. 
Now, hell might try to come at you and affect you in other ways, as Satan, his, his demons often do. They love to bring they love to bring calamity. You know, Jesus even said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But regardless of what hell might throw at us, we know that nothing can separate us from Christ. Even if, even if we have to suffer through great things, it's still nothing can separate us from the love of our living, saving Lord Jesus. And nothing that we go through, whatever suffering may we go through, it never changes those promises of Christ. He remains the same. His promises remain the same. His promises to love us and his promises for our eternal life. Those do not change. We know that in the end, in the end, the demons are silenced and they will be. There is no need to fear. There's no need to fear evil that may come our way. No matter how concerning it may be, no matter how disappointing it may be or infuriating or scary it might be there's no need to fear trust and obey christ trust and obey like that old hymn said right trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey and that's what that's what christ expects of those who love him and who follow him pray to him be in communion and communication with him nurture your relationship with him and evil must flee so remember always keep in mind the proactive nature of the kingdom of god it is not passive it is not reactive it is proactive it is out there it is going it's blazing the trail it's seeking those who are lost and so jesus said to, he came to seek and save the lost we can do no less so do not fear do not fear whatever may come your way do not fear what what the future may look like or what you think the future might hold because remember the one who holds future the future in his very hands it is our saving living lord jesus christ trust and obey Trust in him. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for this, this, uh, this, this beautiful word you have given to us. Lord, we give you thanks, O oh Lord, that you love us so much, dear Lord, that you came to save, you, you came to die to save us from our sins, and, and you rose again on the third day, you know, conquering sin and death and, and, and going back to the Father and one day promising to return again. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you, you don't leave us to our own devices, but you give us the strength and power to, to be proactive in your kingdom because that is the very nature of your kingdom. It's, 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 it's to go and do. Not to sit around and wait for something to happen, but to go and do. So, Lord, bless us, dear Lord. Bless us each day as we t with every step we take to be intentional, mindful about your spreading, spreading the good news of your kingdom no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, according to the, the talents and gifts you have given us, to be ambassadors, witnesses to your gospel and to, to, to trust and obey you and to trust that you will be with us every step of the way as we go and do in your name. We thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, my dear friends, I invite you to check our description box below for this week's featured video from one of the many wonderfully talented people here on YouTube. And we pray that it will be a blessing to you throughout this whole week. And until we can meet again, May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with your spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.